as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For he alone is great and worthy to be adored. Nobody like him. There is none like our God and not to be compared to our God. Hallelujah.
open your mouth and give him the fruit of your lips because there is nobody like him it's in him you live in him you move in him you have your being father we worship you lord we come before you just as we are father accept us accept our sacrifice this morning father we worship you we give you glory honor adoration be thou highly exalted O lord in the name of jesus
down and worship Yahweh. It's okay to bow before your maker this morning. We bow.
Yes, you are the Lord. Oh, yes, you are the Lord. tribe of Judah he is our father he is our king without him we cannot exist let's raise our voice this morning and say father I thank you for your loving kindness over my life nothing else we can give unto you than to worship your name oh give thanks to the Lord for his good and for his mercy endure it forever let's begin to worship his name let's call him by his name is Heshadai is Yeshua is Jehovah Jireh Jehovah Shammah Jehovah Shalom is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords he never changes the one that's only hand even before the beginning began Faithful Father, we thank you this morning. He's the miracle specialist. There is nothing impossible for him to do. Let's worship him. We are alive because of his mercy. We are not consumed by the enemy because he truly loves us. Raise your voice up this morning and say, Father, I thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. 
Abba Father, we thank you. We remember all the good things you've done for us. We look back and we say thank you, Father. We are alive in your presence this morning. We are not buried. We are in your sanctuary to worship you. Father, we thank you. If we can think deeply, we know how great, how merciful, how glorious what God has done for us. Many times we place all our, uh, 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 all our mind on what we are looking for, not knowing what he has done for us. We worship you, Father, this morning. We raise our voice to you with thanksgiving. We come to your presence with a heart full of praise. Father, we thank you. The journey of 2022, we are a living soul in your presence. Over the church of God, we thank you. I want us to call upon the blood of Jesus and cry for mercy over every shortcomings, over every sin, in every area we come short of his glory. For all have sin and come short of the glory of the Lord. Let's call upon his blood. Lord, let him speak mercy. Let him speak mercy over judgment. Let his mercy speak over judgment. We call upon you, Lord, for mercy this morning. Over every shortcoming, every area, we come short of your glory. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Without you, we cannot do anything. We need your mercy. That is why you send your holy begotten son. You send Jesus to come and die for us. To save us from every iniquities. To save us from perishing. Lord, we cry for mercy. Every day that we come to the glory, let your mercy speak. We invite the Holy Spirit. Let's call upon the Holy Spirit to continue to fill this place. We need your presence. We need your presence afresh this morning. The spirit of truth. The spirit of the most high God. The comforter. The counselor. Fill this place with your presence. Let us have a divine account of your glory today. Everyone in your presence today. Let them have a divine encounter with you. We come against every power of darkness. Every power, principalities and powers over our lives, over this place. We call upon the light of the Lord to shine over every darkness. Let your light shine in the name of Jesus. You say, come unto me, all ye that labor and heaven laden. In your presence today, let every yoke be destroyed. In your presence today, let everyone receive blessing. You are the present help in time of troubles. In every situation, in every circumstances, let everyone receive their peace. Thank you, Jesus. Let's begin to worship his name. Father, we worship you. We thank you because you are living God. You are a living Father. All glory, honor, and adoration be unto your name. Ever faithful Father, we thank you. We worship your name. We are created to worship you. Nothing else we can give unto you than to worship you, Lord. We come to your presence this morning with a heart full of praise. Abba Father, thank you, Jesus. As we continue, let your presence continue to go with us in the name of Jesus. Everyone today, let everyone be blessed in your presence in the name of Jesus. This season of your beds, let everyone receive blessing special gift from you today thank you because you are god for in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Uh, let's see uh, Mark 15 from 28. Mark chapter 15 from verse 28. Mark 15 from 28. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by ray on him, wagging, wagging their head and saying, Ah, thou that destroyed the temple and buildest it in three days. Save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priest mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Like Christ the King descended from the cross, that we may see and believe, and they that were with fire we are with him, revived on him. We know what we are celebrating this month. It's very good you understand the purpose of this season and what we are into. This is a story that we know very well. Jesus hung on the cross. Many spoke many things about him. Many talked lavishly, said many things, but not knowing that actually this is the purpose, is the agenda of him coming to the earth. Many saw him there being despised. Being rubbished in the measure of men. They spoke many things about him, but they didn't understand that this is the purpose that he came. This morning, I want us to give you a charge. Don't be too quick to speak, not knowing what people are passing through, not knowing whether is this the purpose of God, agenda for them to come into the earth. Even the chief priests, people we thought to be the people that ought to reason properly, even said all manner of things against him, but not knowing that this is the purpose he came. What are you passing through this morning? Is it the agenda? Is it the purpose? Is it the will of God for your life? If men are mocking you, what matters is how God sees you, not how devil sees you. Not how many sees you. It's how God sees you. That is what matters a lot. He was hung there. Many said many things. But when he gave up the ghost, we saw life came about to us. We saw light came. Through Christ, we became what we are. Through Christ, we are celebrating today. Bible says we have been redeemed out of the poles of the darkness. Somebody can just bow your head and down. Ask God to reveal to you more. We are in the season. Just talk to God this, this, this morning. We are in season. Let his agenda be manifest upon your life. He spoke many things, but not knowing that it is the purpose of God for him to come. Giving the glory, say, in all things, we are more than conquerors, nay, in all these things. Bless his holy name. Magnify him. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. Hallelujah. This morning we have beautiful ones in the, in the house. And I would like, if today is your first time of being in our midst, we want to welcome you in a special way. Please, can you kindly be on your feet, please? If today is your first time of worshiping with us in this house, please, can you kindly be on your feet, please? Somebody, are you clapping for Jesus this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. This is Dominion Sanctuary Parish where God is doing wonderful things. As you can see from the worship section tonight, it has been awesome. We would love you to fill the uh, paper with your proper information, WhatsApp number, calling number. There are a team that are specialized to call you and follow you up. As we do it, God will surely bless you. I will never remain the same. Hallelujah. Jam your hands for Jesus, somebody.
praise the living Jesus. This is the time to give a offering unto the Lord. It seems you are not smiling this morning. Look at your neighbor. Are you happy in your presence? Just ask your neighbor. Are you happy in God's presence today? I hope the response is positive. When we are giving unto God, give with a cheerful heart, with smile on your face, dance in the presence of God. And you know he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When you give unto him, he's ready to reward you and he will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. The titles in the house, you come first, and then after you drop your tithe, wait for the prayers. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Has the Lord been good to you all? I don't know about you, but he has been good to me. If you know that the Lord has been good to you, I want you to rise up on your feet and give God praise. Give God a dancing offering. Hallelujah, I'm not going to finish from my mouth, yo. Goodness and mercy going to follow from my life, yo. hands of God will be upon your business, upon your work, and you will continue to flourish in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are called for in Jesus' name. We are praying. Amen. Let everybody dance in God's presence today. Give your offering with a cheerful heart.
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time in your presence to give unto you. And we bless this offering to be used for your glory in the name of Jesus. And for everyone that have donated and have given their offering today, may you receive blessing in abundance in the name of Jesus. You can't give to Jesus. You can't give to the Lord and take the same portion. The blessing of the Lord that is beyond your imagination will visit you this week in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are awesome. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. seated we have come today this morning to reaffirm with our spirit to God that we are devoted to him he is the Lord he never changes and there is no one like him hallelujah oh.
And there is no one, no one like you You are holy, holy Lord God Almighty And forever you will be my God this morning and you're asking him God we are close to 31st you didn't help me from January till date so how is it possible for you to help me in the remaining few weeks Think. but I bring good news to you that our God is faithful and our God is capable thank you Jesus Tears. God understands Mr. Worry don't cry Mr. Worry don't cry anymore Don't share any tears God understands Mr. Worry don't cry Mr. Worry don't cry anymore don't share any tears God understands Look at someone and tell him Mr. Worry, don't cry anymore Don't share any tears He understands Mr. Worry, don't cry Mr. Worry, don't cry Don't share any tears it's you yeah. He knows you by your name He knows the numbers 
hands off your hands You are the apple of his eyes He will not let you down God understands He, he knows you by your name He knows the numbers of your hands You are the rock hole of his eye He will not let you down God understands Mr. Worry don't cry Mr. Worry don't cry anymore Don't shed any tears Mr. Worry, don't cry, Mr. Worry. If you believe, pray in the Holy Ghost. If you believe that Jesus is alive, why don't you just thank him? Say, Lord, I thank you for a glorious day like this. Say, because I know you are with me and I know you will never fail me. I know that you will take me to the end and you will bring me a hope and a future. Say, Jesus, I thank you. I appreciate you. That it doesn't matter what I'm passing through. It doesn't matter what signs and season says. But one thing that I know, that the set time to favor me has come. And the set time is now. The set time is now. The set time is now. When Jesus had an encounter with a man at the pool of Bethesda, he asked him one question, do you want to be made whole? And the Lord is asking someone this morning, he said, do you want to be blessed? And I bring good news to you that your set time is now. If you believe, why don't you shout a big hallelujah? Let's be kindly seated. I want to greet one or two persons and say good morning to the presence of God. Amen. Let's look at Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. But our anchor scripture today is from Matthew 2, 1 to 12. We are still in the season of experiencing the significance of Christ's birth. But today, we want to look at the three wise men. All right, and I just want you to open your ears and pay attention. And I believe that the Lord will speak to us this morning in the name of Jesus. He said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not unto thy own understanding. Verse 6. In all the ways, acknowledge what him and he shall direct your path. I just want to bring something to you that in the confine of this world, in the confine of this world, just pay attention to what illustration I want to make to you this morning and I believe that it's going to help every one of us. In the confine of this world, there is sickness, all right? There is affliction. There are all kinds of things, depression, there are sorrows, there are disappointment. All these things are in the confine of this world. And that is why when you look at when you're born again, God takes us from the confine of this world into the kingdom of God. Now, in the confine of this world, there is sickness, all right? But in the kingdom of God, there is joy unspeakable. 
Now, one of the mistakes that we make when we are born again is that instead of moving away from the confine of this world into the kingdom of God, we remain in the confine of this world. And that's the reason why you see some people ask a question, and I believe that you know it, that why are unbelievers prospering? You've heard that question many times. Say, I'm a believer. I trust God for years. But why are unbelievers prospering? But one thing I want to make you understand, your life is predestinated. You are a child of purpose. The devil will not fight a child who is not of purpose. It doesn't matter how rich you are. He's not interested because you are already with him. Are you listening to me, sir? And that's why when you see people who are rich, you say, how come they are rich and you are poor? The devil will not have time for people who are rich, who are already with him. And they are going to the same place with him do you think he will be interested in them no i'm not saying all rich people are with the devil but i'm just trying to bring your attention to questions that you ask but the reason why jesus said you should come is because when you're in the confine of this world what happens your thought process will be in the confine of this world and that's why when you're going through trial times you're worried and what does worry does what it brings about stress and stress is not the design of God's kingdom because in his kingdom he said it is what finished so if you stay in the confine of the kingdom of God it is difficult for you to be depressed and stressed because when you look at it today one of the things that happen when you look at hypertension diabetes one of the things that stress does is that it reduces your immunity so your body becomes be immunized that anything can happen to you but at this point it is not the fault of Jesus because he has paid the price and he has asked you in Matthew 11 28 to 29 that come to me all you the labor and have it led in, and I will give you what rest but if you don't have an understanding you will be in the confine of this world you'll be stressed and these things will naturally happen things like depression things like loneliness Things, just name it, will be certain because you are still living in the confine of this earth. And that's why you don't have a moral right to ask Jesus, that why am I still sick? Do we understand what I'm saying? And that's the truth. I'm privileged to walk in the hospital time ago and most of the cases you see are stress-induced. One thing about this life you should understand is that you can be stressed from people. You can be stressed from your job. You can be stressed from the church. And that's why God knew he sent his spirit. So that there will be manifestation of his fruit. That has to do with perseverance and patience. And like as I was telling them in the Bible study. I said the only way you can succeed as a Christian is to develop yourself. Are you with me sir? So it doesn't matter what the signs of times are. You have to develop yourself in the king of glory. And that's what happened to Jesus. Because he was a sign, a son of purpose. And that's why they were massacre of innocent children. Just because of one man. And I'm going to be telling us about star. And we're going to understand it better. Are we together? So no matter what you're passing through today. Like the scripture said in James 1. In this season of December, you must count it all joy because you understand the significance of Christ's birth. It brings you to remembrance that Jesus died, he was born, he died. He is resurrected, seated at the right hand of God in heaven. And we're going to see one concept that will help us this morning. It will help you not to worry. It doesn't matter how decayed that situation is. And when you look at the life of Lazarus, they told him he was a very good friend of Jesus. After four days, he went. Why? He said, so that my fame will be known all over Israel. And we together. So when he had an encounter, he said, Father, I thank you because I know you've heard me. And what happened? He said, Lazarus came back to life. So it doesn't matter what has been dead in your life. But I bring good news to you this morning that your star shall rise again in the name of Jesus. In Matthew 2 verse 1, basically I want us to look at that Matthew 2, 1 to 12. I will just read through very fast. It says, now, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, 
there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. And one thing I want you to understand, get this concept clear. They were, uh, uh, how do you speak? Is it astrologers? And these people were not Christians, isn't it? And they came to pay homage. One thing I want to make you understand about star, when your star is bright, your divine helpers will locate you. It doesn't matter whether they are Christians or pagan. God will use anything to be a blessing upon your life. Are you with me, sir? God can use this chair to bless you, sir. As you are walking, the chair will, you will stumble on the chair. From there, you will be in the hospital. From there, you will meet your divine helper. If you understand the dimension of God, you will love Jesus. Even before the day break, in the morning, you are already awake by five because the service is nine. Because you want to be in his presence. Amen. So this is what I want you to understand. If you are a child of purpose, the devil will fight your destiny and we're going to see that. He won't leave you. But when you are not a child of purpose, he doesn't care. Because he knows you are already with him. Why is he fighting you? He won't fight you. He knows he's happy. And that's why when you look at people who do some things to make money, for example, rituals, they get it. Why? Because he knows that your life will be cut short. Will he fight it? He won't fight it. He won't fight it. All right. Let's continue. He says, saying, where is that he that is born of the king of Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. And we come to worship him. Verse 3. Men, we worship you this season. Believe me. Wherever your divine helpers are, hear me today. They will locate you in the name of Jesus. As long as you heed to God's word. Faithful and obedience, they will locate you wherever they are, sir. Let me tell you one story. There was a day I didn't have money. I was so broke. Some weeks before, you know, then I live in Sharjah. Oh, I still live in Sharjah anyway. At that time, in Sharjah, we were going to Dubai for church. So I didn't have money to buy gas. It was that bad. So I told God, I said, Father, if I don't have money, but I have to be in church. So what I need to do is that I will start trekking one hour before time so that I'll be in church. Are you with me? On that night, my divine helper was in UK. He said, the Lord ministered to my spirit that you need money. Distance is not a barrier. Listen to me, sir. Even if you are single here, wherever your divine helper is, or your life partner, even if he's in America, the Lord will bring him nigh. Situations will make you meet. Are you there? Jesus is Lord. I have seen the goodness of God and that's why I can testify to you. I have nothing to lose but I have a lot to gain. And that's why Paul said to live is Christ but to die is gain. But he has to live so that he can preach the truth. When Herod the king had heard these things he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. He said when he was born, his star was highlighted. And this was a prophecy that came from Messiah. And it came to manifestation. They knew about it. He said, and they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. So your future is already written according to God's word. That you will be the head and not the tail. From the day you are born into the kingdom of God, your star is highlighted. And that's the reason why the devil fights salvation. If you understand the concept of salvation, believe me, you will give your life to Christ every minute. That Jesus, I love you, you are my God. Because you understand that realm of the kingdom. That is what the devil do. You're going to see the differentiation in stars when you were in the world and when you come to the kingdom of God. He said his star was highlighted. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor, and they shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he heard, when he had briefly called his wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appear and this is what the enemy does 
And that's why you must be careful about things you do and people you commune with. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. But that's not true. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And that's why when you give your life to Jesus, heavens rejoices and the kingdom of God is awake about the rejoicing. They know that there is a birth that has come into the kingdom of God. And the devil, they are lost. Say, so, alright, he has come. And they will do everything possible to frustrate that star. That's why we must be wise. The ball is in your courts. And that's why the Bible says, Walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's in your hands. Don't be jumping from one place looking for me or looking for any prophets or pastor. Once you're born into the kingdom of God, what you need is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I would develop you in a time like this. Otherwise, you would bring yourself back to the confine of this world. When those things you're waiting for are not forthcoming, you begin to, I think it's for my mother's house. I think he's that guy. Anything that does anything, you are suspicious. And that is how it is in that kingdom. There is all form of suspicion. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they present unto him gifts of good frankincense and mine. And the last one says, And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed in their own country to another way. And I love the theme for today in the Sunday school is speaking about hearing from God talking about divine guidance and divine direction and the Lord will be speaking to us from today in the name of Jesus one of the keynotes today I want you to understand is that the devil understands the significance of Christ's birth if you think he doesn't understand then you're joking he knows and he knows that the significance is to reconcile men with God and the glory restored that was lost from creation you remember the Bible said man died but through the death of Jesus, he said that glory was restored back to you. Alright, so the devil is fighting the glory. He doesn't want to lose, but he is already a loser. So the key note is that Christ was to be born according to prophecy. Christ was to be born according to what? Prophecy. Your coming to the reality of the truth is according to prophecy. And we're going to see it shortly. The lesson is this. Our lives is a prophetic declaration and predestinated. Ephesians 1, 4 to 5. Ephesians 1, 4 to 5. And I want you to just prepare the other scriptures. Ephesians 1, 11. Ephesians 1, 4 to 5. Ephesians 1, 11. John 15, 16. He said, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love the next scripture the next one he said having predestinated us unto adoption of children by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his word will did you see that your life is predestinated according to his good pleasure of his will and that's why you must surrender your will to him you must do that he said, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own word, will, not according to your will. So our life is being predestinated, and there is nothing the devil can do about it. The only way the devil can do something is when you allow him. But from the confine of God's kingdom, when you cross, there is nothing the devil can do. I can assure you that. But if you are still in the confine of the world, there is a lot of things he can do. John 15 verse 16. John 15 verse 16. Just follow the scripture before we go to the next one. He said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth what? fruit yes you go and bring forth 
Let's shout it. Yes, you go and bring forth. And that your fruit should. Are you with me, sir? And what fruit are we talking about? The patience and perseverance. The long suffering should be there. The love, the grace, everything, meekness should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. When it what? Remain. Are you there? And the word may is probability. Are you there, sir? Look at the scripture critically. The word may is probability because there is already a word that says when you remain. But when you are out of it, no matter what you ask, you will walk according to your will. And that's why men struggle. And when you struggle, these things begin to happen in your life. But that will never be our portion in the name of Jesus. The assurance is that it will come to pass. Tell your neighbor it will come to pass. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it will come to pass. Just the way the devil fought Christ's bet, the devil is fighting the church. He knows that one will chase what? And two, he knows. And that's why when you look at the church, there is no unity. He knows. He will fight the unity of the church so that the church cannot stand. So that he can penetrate and make believers depressed. But we must be sensitive. He said, can two walk together except they agree? It must three, three. We must walk together as believers. And that's why whatever you're doing when you come to the presence of God, you must take it very seriously, believe me. We must take it very seriously. He's fighting the church day and day. You know why he's fighting the church? I've said it before in the past. I want to show you. He doesn't want it because you know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and power. And that's why when you use your five senses to deal with things of the spirit, it is difficult for you to stand test of time. But when we are smart enough, when you look at Ephesians 6, 23, from verse 17 down, he speaks about the sword of the spirit and the helmet of righteousness. Are we there? So, what is the reason? Why is the devil fighting the church? It's so simple. It's in Ephesians 3, 10 to 11. Ephesians 3, 1. I want to give you three reasons why the devil is fighting the church. And the church connotes you and I. The devil is not fighting this flower because this is not a church. Devil cannot fight this. This is not a church. But the church is you and I. It's the people. And that's what is called Zion. Alright? So prepare for me. Ephesians 3, 10 to 11. That's the first one. And the second one is in Isaiah 8, verse 18. And the third one is in Micah 7, verse 8. And we're going to look at it also from Isaiah 60, verse 1. We're going to read a lot of scripture because I want you to understand what I'm saying. Because I don't want to talk from my kind of knowledge, but I want us to see it from the direction of God's word. Why is the reason why the devil is fighting us? One, to the intent that now the principalities are unto the principalities and power in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. And that's why the devil will fight the church. He knows that there is power in unity. When you look at our flag, for those who are from my country, if you look at our flag, there's what we call, he said, unity is what? No. Unity is strength. There is strength in unity. All right. So when you go further there, he said, according to the eternal purpose, which he proposed in Christ our Lord. According to what? Eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ our Lord. The next scripture. So the next one is this. is in Isaiah 8 verse 18. The reason why the devil is fighting the church. He said, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. Those that dwelleth in Mount Zion and Mount Zion cannot wear the church. So the devil will fight it. Because he knows that you are made for amazement. That your life has been beautified by the blood of Jesus. So he will do everything possible to scatter the church. And that's why we must be sensitive as believers. The third one is that. Betting the church will depopulate the kingdom of darkness. So he will do everything possible to fight the church. And when you look at Micah 7 verse 8. It says rejoice not against me. Oh my enemy, when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, 
the Lord shall be a light unto me. They know. And that's why they will fight the light. Are we together? And that's why when the word came to Herod, he was determined to kill Jesus when he saw the star. All right. The next scripture in Isaiah 60 verse 1, Isaiah 60 verse 1, we look at the scriptures there, he said, Arise, shine, for the light is come. So what the devil is doing, he doesn't allow, he doesn't want this light to shine on you because the scripture says you are the light of the world. The devil is not happy about this because you have taken his place. So he will do everything possible to bring you down and that's why you must be sensitive. Isaiah 9 verse 2, Isaiah 9 verse 2 says the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light that they dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them had the light walk shine. He said, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, he said, I fear no evil. Why? Because the rod and staff comforts me. And the rod connotes the word of God. Are you there, sir? And that's why the devil will fight the church. Matthew 4 verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. And after this, we look at the scripture. That's when God had an encounter with the fishermen. He said, come unto me. And the Bible said they left their nest and they followed him. So the question is, are you ready to follow Jesus? And leave everything you have. I'm not telling you to leave your job, but you must make God priority in a time like this. Because 2023 is waiting for you, but we must make God priority in 2023. Colossians 1 verse 3. Colossians 1 verse 3. The last one. Colossians 1 verse 3. Six, sorry, 13. Who had delivered us from the power of what? Darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. In Matthew 2, 2b to 4, Matthew 2, 2b to 4, we are still on our anchor test. He said, for we have seen his star in the east. The star seen in the east connotes the light or glory of the Lord. So the key note is that when a man is born again, there is an appearance which is called star. So the new bed usher us into a new Jerusalem. And this is what the devil doesn't want. And when you look at what is the meaning of we look at the word star. When you look at star, literally, we can look at it from two dimensions. One, from existence. And two, from what? Presence. From existence and presence. Let me give a scenario. For example, uh, I am here. You can see me. I exist. All right. But in presence is what you cannot what? See. And that's why when you are born again, the devil knows in the eye of the spirit, they see this star that you don't see. Are we together, sir? So when Jesus was born, the star of Jesus was highlighted. And the three wise men, those that God has destined to worship him, saw this star. And they traced this star to meet the king of kings so that they can honor him. Now what the devil does is this. When you are in the confine of the world, when you are in the confines of the world, he restricts your star so that you will not be born into the new Jerusalem where your star is highlighted. Are you with me, sir? So at that point in time, it is difficult. He fights the believer. You see the things of the world. You are carried away by the things of the world, by the cars, by the treasures of the world, the houses, all the good things of life. You begin to see yourself. You fight against those things. And the devil captured the star at that point so that you will not come to the reality of the newness of Jerusalem, which is the star that is highlighted. Are we together, sir? Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. And when you go for that, I said the new bed usher us into a new Jerusalem. The lesson is that any man born of God cannot miss his or divine helper. Any man born of God cannot miss his or divine helpers. In no matter the distance, the time, and the season, when a man is born again, his star is highlighted. I want you to see something in Matthew 5, 14 to 15. Matthew 5, 14 to 16, 15, and Revelation 22, 16, and Numbers 24, verse 17. Matthew 5, 14 to 16, Revelation 22, 16 says, 
Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill can never be what? You cannot. When you come to the reality of God's truth, when your star is highlighted, there is no man that can close that star. And that's why you keep hearing people say, they've used his star. Have you heard it several times? They have used his star. And you are asking, what is this star that they are using? They are talking about a presence that is highlighted, that is invisible, that you can only see divinely. Many times, they said they have killed this star. They have closed this star. Have you not asked yourself, what is this star that they are talking about? Is it the same star that is in heaven that has that shape? Have you not sat down to ask yourself, but this is divine. He talks about a presence that is unseen. Are you with me, sir? So the devil, he knows they see and that's why most of us who have gone to diviners when you go there they look at your hand they say we can see that your star is bright they saw the presence that you cannot see with the physical eye and they speak about that star but that star talks about your coming into the newness of god i'm talking to believers so they keep you in the confine of not being born again so that they can take advantage of your star. And that's why salvation is very necessary. You must genuinely give your life to Jesus. Otherwise the devil will play with your star. Like star boys. You know those people they call stars. But that will never be your portion. Being with Christ makes your star secured. And this is what we must understand. And when you go further, they say, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Because the devil know that through you, many destinies will be blessed. And that's why a lot of people's stars have been hindered. Not because of you alone. Because they know that you will be blessing to generations. They know it. And that's when we look at some family. There are things that happen. You see, this family, their star is highlighted. So what they do in this family, they bring a recurrent sickness or something that is recurrent. They said at this point in time, in this day, the brother died. That same period, the next brother died. That same period, the other brother died. They killed the lineage because they know that this lineage will be great. But if your eyes are not open, the devil will destroy the lineage. But that will not be our portion. And we can see over time in that lineage, when one of them come to the knowledge of the truth, that lineage become what? Secured and restored. He said, thank God I gave my life to Jesus. He said, I have lost my sleeping. There are the same things that has been happening in my family. But God has saved me. And that's why you must take salvation very important. Staying with Christ is key. Don't play with the world in the confine of this world. Because... You wrestle not against flesh and blood. And 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto thee these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright. He called himself what? The morning star. Do you know what church is that? You remember the churches. It's called the corrupt church. And that's what he's talking about. He said, For unto these things in the church, I am the root of the offspring of David and the brighter morning star. He said, this star will shine upon the church so that many will be reformed. Are we together? As many as we are, we are very powerful stars. Have you seen power meet powers? Have you ever taken time when you take a positive wire? You know when you disconnect this wire, the positive of both. And you place just one you know there is a big spark and when you keep adding more wires the spark become what dangerous and that thing can cause fire and order the devil knows that we coming together will be fire so he will cause disunity and divided attention and that's why in the confine of this world he will bring your job so that you will not have time for the things of god you'll always be tired the devil will not bring apples sir but he will bring things that will make you tired so that the church will be powerless. Are you with me? And that's why you keep running that that man of God is powerful but you're losing power. That's what it means. A man cannot be an island of himself. 
It's a church. It's called Mount Zion. As we gather together, he said, on the day of Pentecost, 120 people were in the room. He said, and the spirit of God break down when they were in one accord. We should be gathering as believers here when we lift our hands and say, Father, we want these things to happen. Man will be prophesying in our midst because you have the gift. Somebody's not listening to me. Man should be prophesying while we are here praying. The Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said, people are praying in the Holy Ghost. That is the church. He knew that they were buying and selling in the temple. He wasn't happy about that. And that was the description of what is to happen in the church. And the Bible says, Jesus fought against those things. In the church, sir, there is no buying and selling. The devil doesn't buy and sell. No, sir. He said he's roaring like a lion. He's just seeking who to devour. Whose star is just exposed for him to punch you. Be sensitive to the spirit. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Love God. My keynote this morning is, we can also see that number 24 verse 17. That was a reference to Revelations 26, 16. He said, and I see him, but not now. I shall behold him. But not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of what? Israel. And shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. So they know. They will fight. He said, they will surely gather. But the good news is, they will what? Some people are not even sure. I said, they will gather, but they will what? Don't be afraid of them. They will scatter. It is sure. He said, the word of God is pure and true and nothing can change it. He said, because I honor my word more than anything. Are you there, sir? So this lesson is, or basically the keynote for today is that, like you said, star connotes presence. And the presence can be divine and it can exist and in that star there is direction there is guidance to that place of honor all right and while i was preparing the message the lord lay in my spirit as your amen will be the loudest he said there is someone here that the herald of your life shall be bypassed and the glory of god upon your life shall be seen in the name of jesus Listen, if they like, let them go and look at all the palms. If they like, let them throw all the beats. If they like, let them throw the collar up and down to see your destiny. But the word of God says the reward, they will not triumph. That's the good news I have for you. It doesn't matter where they will call your name, except you are not sure of the kingdom where you are. And if you are not sure, it is an opportunity for you to come to that kingdom, as we'll be doing that shortly. But if you are sure, wherever they will mention your name, the fire of God will intervene. We should not be afraid of principalities and power. Because the wisdom has been given to us to communicate to them. And that's why we have the power to speak to Satan. Listen, sir. I don't have strength to start asking, what's your name? Uh, your name is this. Where are you from? <laughs> are you playing? No. Right. Left. No. He said... In the name of Jesus, I command that demon to live and the demon will pay attention. It is not a misconception of that name. No, sir. We don't dialogue with demons. No. When Jesus had an encounter with them, what did they say? They quickly say, my Lord and my God. He said, please don't cast us away, but cast us into what? The swine. Even the devil knows him. They believe in him. We can see that in James 2, 19, 18, 19, they're about they know him so you don't dialogue jesus never dialogue with demons no point you speak and they obey that's the authority you have and that's why when you're filled with the spirit of god when you shake a demon say sir how do you do there is a transfer of power they know that somebody has shook them somebody was passing by who was filled of the holy ghost while he was passing in the marketplace something fell while he was about to pick he looked down he saw people you saw 
sitting were sitting with their heads in the market. But you are seeing them sitting with their buttocks. No, they were sitting with their head and their legs were up. Are we together, sir? So tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the Lord shall open your eyes. And the second prayer for someone this morning. He said, there is someone here that your star is rising above limits. And your divine helper shall locate you before 2023. In the name of Jesus. There we have no rest. They will not sleep. They go to a toilet as they are poo-pooing. They are remembering you. They are eating. They are remembering you. They drink water. They are remembering you. No matter what they do, you cannot leave their side. Except they come to help you. In the name of Jesus. Why will they sleep? When purpose has not been fulfilled. They will not. Have you not gone to interview? They saw you. He said, he said, bro, there is something about you that I don't understand. Did you watch the football yesterday? Ah, oh, it was so glorious. Look at the way Argentina at ah, Calas. Just go. We will call you and you've got the job. That's it. Sir, when you carry power, every HRO will what? No, sir. See, you cannot come and beg God and say, Father, I beg you. You are the king of kings. You'll be rolling on the ground. You are crying. After crying here, you still go and be crying. Sir, you know my visa will soon collapse. No, it's a misunderstanding of prayer. When you go for interview, you are going that I'm going to take it. Your confidence. You go there, it's your job. You will do it. If it's not your job, glory to Jesus. I went to interview. The man saw me. We waited for almost two hours. After the very funny HR now came and said, we should see. He took my CV. He said, bro, there is something in me that said I should not give you the job. I said, look at this man. He said, sir, that thing in you, tell him to calm down. I need a job. I have family. He told me, he said, you don't understand. I said, no, you don't understand. He said, but I know what I'm saying. He said, go, your job will come. God can speak through anyone and I left. But at the time of life, the job came. Don't beg, man. They don't have power. Even I, as a pastor, don't have the power. He alone has the power. And that's why all glory must be called toward him. Listen, sir, that's why when man dies, they say that man has been called toward. You cannot be called to yourself. There is only one glory, which is the glory of God. Are you there, sir? And that's why you must respect him. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, one of the questions I want to ask us this morning, how did they know and be assured that such a person was born? Because how did they know that this kind of thing will happen? Because there was already a prophecy. And let's look at the prophecy. If you look at it in that Numbers 24, 17, like we rightly said here, he said, I shall see him, but now I shall behold, but now nigh. They shall come and start out of they know and this is prophecy of Balaam who live in the east so man has consulted when the belly is already like this they've seen it he said when John the Baptist was in the belly of the moon he said he was filled of the Holy Ghost how did they know so have you asked yourself how did they know who wrote the scripture how did he know? Operate divinely. You will see things divinely. So they know. There are magics. There are diviners. Before you were born, they know. They know that you'll be child of purpose. Believe me. I remember one time when we were younger. My younger brother, he used to worry a lot. And I begged him. I said, sir, if worries can help, you'd be one of the richest man I've seen in the world. The boy, they worry. When he goes on Facebook, he sees his friend. You see what I was trying to tell you? See brother Mike, see brother this, see brother this. And one day while he was walking, a very old man saw him and told him, said, your star is bright. Go. And that was it. 
But should I tell you, all those people he was honoring before, he's now above them. I've said it before. He's in the military in the in US. He's a nurse. He has gotten his PhD. And I reminded him when he came to Dubai. I said, Do you remember what I was telling you? Because whatever God has spoken, sir, it doesn't matter time, it will come to pass. Ten years ago, I was looking at my picture, I just burst into laughter. I didn't understand my neck structure. Even my head was a little bit bent. So when I saw the picture, I said, Jesus is Lord, though. Are you there, sir? So sometimes, just go to your old pictures and look at it when you did NYSC. You will know how you look. You will rejoice in the Lord the way you are now. So the good news is that God who took you from then and brought you to now is taking you from now to that place he has predestinated. Do you understand it, sir? Sir, take a look at your pictures every year. You are different. Have you not noticed it? When you know this year, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're like, wow, I'm so sweet. After two years, that picture will be outdated. And there's always a newness. So his messes are new every morning. His blessings are always new every day. There's always an uplifting. And that's why they say the devil is worried. You know what worrying is? He will not rest. Because he's following you, knowing that he's going. All right, he's going. But we must stay in the Lord. And once you're in the Lord, the devil will have no hold concerning your life. The lesson in all this, when you are born again, the devil lost his kingdom in us. Once you're born again, he lost his kingdom in you. And that's the end. And that's why he will make you even more remorse than to be born again. And that's why he will bring you to a place where you'll be excited. And if you give your life to Jesus, he will give you car. He will give you house. He will fight your enemies. So when you come out, the first thing that will make you come here, you know, we were doing counseling when the general overseer came to UAE. And I saw one boy, he was so excited. You know, I said, ah, congratulations. He said, yeah, because I just came out, I wanted Daddy Joe to touch my head. That's why he came out, not because he gave his life to Christ. So many saw that he gave, but in the realm of the spirit, he acted. Don't act. Genuinely surrender to Jesus. Mark what I tell you. If it doesn't happen, let me not say much. Stop coming to this church. I'm saying it categorically. Give your life to Jesus genuinely. Mark what I'm telling you. You'll be a battle axe in his hands. Your star will be highlighted. Now we know that someone is born into the kingdom of God. That's what I'm saying. He that is born of the spirit, he shall enter. Let me be fast now. In Matthew 2, 5 to 6 and Micah 5 verse 2, this was prophecy of Micah. Let's just see Micah 5 verse 2 so that we'll be very fast. But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, I said, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of these shall, be, shall he come forth. Unto me that is to be a ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. You may be asking yourself, he said, my village is one village called Obori Koko. It doesn't matter. Out of Obori Koko, the Lord is bringing a shining star. This is what I'm telling you. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you like, you're born in anywhere in the U.S., you can still be poor. There are people in the U.S. who are poor, very poor. They live in slum. If you've been in UK to Peckham, you see people who are suffering. There are beggars in Europe. I have been in Europe many times and I see people beg. They are on the streets. They come to you. They beg money. It doesn't make a difference. But what God has spoken, no matter where you are, I've told you of a pastor who was with us because he had the gift of prophecy and miracles. They sent him to the village. While he was going there, he obeyed. While he was going, he saw a madman on the street. And he laid his hand on the madman. The madman came to life. The church in the village became bigger than the one in town. They still came to remove him there. Did you see what Matthew 5, 14 said? Even no matter how small a light is, tell them to switch off this light. You see that red timer? It will still show. Because it cannot hide. That's what I'm telling you. No matter how small, 
they cannot hide your destiny. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I am a child of destiny. In that Matthew 2, 7 to 11, as I'm about to round up, he said, Herod inquired what time the star appeared. He got the accurate, exact, precise time of the stars appearing to them, hereby they might exactly know the age of Christ. And when you look at it at that point, that's when he knew the age, there was massacre of the innocents. But the question is, why? We cannot ask why. Because when you are a child of purpose, things will happen. You saw what happened to Jonah? You saw what happened to him? They had to. My brother, you need to go before you cause commotion amongst us. If you are a child of purpose, obey the call of God upon your life. This is where I'm going. Don't go and put us in trouble. If you are a child of purpose, yeah, obey the call. Don't put your family and your generations in distress. Many people know they have a call of God upon their life, but you're running. Why do you want to pay the price and suffer your generations? No, sir. He said, for our generation shall be called what? Blessed. Save your generation by accepting this call today. You know what that means? We are all evangelists. Preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Save your generation. He said, let the rod of the wicked not be upon the righteous. You know, I've said this several times. There are things we suffer from that we don't even know what we've done. And you keep asking God, why me? There is never answer. Because he's what? God. In Matthew 2 verse 12, he said they were warned by God. Alright? So whatever God has told you, you know, you're here. Things are hard. He's telling you stay. But you said, I want to go. Or the Lord is telling you go. You say, I don't want to go because my village people will laugh at me. Let them laugh. You laugh last. Laugh best. This is what I mean. Somebody who left here some time ago when we were at KFC, he said he was looking for a job for a long time. He never had a job. And he told me, Pastor, I have to go. He said, what do you think? I said, I don't think as a man of God. I walk according to what the Lord has told you and what has the Lord told you. He said, I'm convinced to go. He went back to his country. He was working in Shell in Abuja in a very good company. And the guy is doing well. Are you there with me, sir? Obey the voice of the Lord. Amen. Conclusion. Like I said, after this, there was massacre of the innocents. Revelations 2 verse 28 spoke about the corrupt church. The dawn of light connotes reformation. He said, and I will give him the morning star. And the dawn of this morning star connotes what? reformation how can you have this star when you don't know Christ are we together let's rise up eyes closed, heads bowed we're going to be transforming ourselves from a kingdom into the kingdom of your dear son please I want to beg you before you cross into 2023 if you don't know Jesus, it's just a time for you to do that now. Eyes closed, please. Let's just close our eyes and begin to meditate. And let's begin to pray in our spirit that Lord touch my heart. Now you want to come into this new kingdom so that there will be change of star. Lift your hands quickly in the name of Jesus. I beg of you. There is no carryover to 2023. Don't carry that life to 2023. If you want the dawn of his morning to come upon you, just lift your hands. Be very confident to do it. If you want to even lift your leg alongside, just lift it and surrender to Jesus now. Please, I beg of you. I have a little bit of time. I'm very conscious about this time. Pray in your spirit wherever you are. Look in depth into your life. Because we're going to make him declaration now. Shed for me and thy beast me come to thee, O Lamb of God. I come. I Brother, come. 
Thank you, Jesus. I am. God bless you, sir. Just begin to celebrate and pray for these ones. Father, we just give you all the glory. We thank you for these souls. In the name of Jesus. Father, we are so grateful for these lives that you have called today. We thank you for these ones. That there shall be reformation upon your life in the name of Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Of God I come. I Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Four of you say, Lord Jesus. I come to you. I know that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. So that I will be saved. I confess my sins to you. Father, wash me, cleanse me in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess you before men that you are my king. Come into my life in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, as I have placed my hands in this plow, may I never look back in the name of Jesus. I impart you with the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus that from now on the move of His power will be moved upon your life in the name of Jesus. You begin to operate in God's Spirit in power in the name of Jesus. I impart you, sir, with the Spirit of God right now. Let the Spirit of God come mightily upon you from here onwards. You will begin to walk in the counsel of God in the name of Jesus. I impact you with the spirit of the Holy Ghost. From now onwards, you will begin to operate in the dimension of God's spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. I impact you with the spirit of God. From now onwards, you begin to operate in God's spirit in the name of Jesus. Be filled with the spirit of God in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you this hour. That by the power in the name of Jesus. Whatever that has made you sorrow in the past, from now onwards, your life will be celebration in the name of Jesus. I speak the word of God upon each one of you right now that you will be a battle axe in the hands of the Almighty God in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has not planted in your life by the power in the name of Jesus, I uproot it right now in the name of Jesus. Every yoke that is not of God upon your life, it is lifted now. In the name of Jesus. I cover your life with the blood of Jesus. His blood will speak for you. Better things in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for you are awesome. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we are praying. Congratulations, sir. You can kindly be seated please they will just take your details just cooperate with them so that we'll be praying for you amen and thy peace may come to thee o land of god i come i come this morning I want us to ask God for just one Christmas gift. Alright? And make it be very specific. And that's what we did at the region, at the provincial headquarters. And I want you, when you're done, just write it on the paper and write to this date. And the time is 11.59. Alright? 11.59.42. Whenever you say it, just write the time you see, okay? I want you to meditate on one thing. You are asking God for a Christmas gift. There's going to be release of that gift upon your life. Please, I beg of you, just one. Don't say car. Uh, no, this. No, one, two, three, four. No, one. And I want you to mark the date and timing. And it will come to manifestation. Are you ready? Let me give you one minute so that you can meditate. You know, maybe you have two things. You are thinking which one first. So make up your mind before we pray. 
Are you ready? If you're ready, give me a heads up. Are you ready? And you know the time, right? You can bend your neck. It's fine. Just look at the time. In Genesis 18 verse 14, he said, when he had an encounter with Sarah, he told her, he said, this same time next year, you will bear a child. And the word of God came according to the scripture. He said, that same time, he said, Sarah bore a child. By the power in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have asked God for now as your Christmas gift, by the power in the name of Jesus, as you have written it down, the date and time, it shall manifest in the name of Jesus. I decree one more time, whatever you have written in your heart, as you are going to be writing it on your paper, by the power in the name of Jesus, whatever you have asked God, in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, it is manifesting right now, in the name of Jesus, pray in the Holy Ghost wherever you are, the fire of God will consume you now. Power of the living God. I see that five point point In the name of Jesus. Every report that the doctor has given you that is not your report. By the power in the name of Jesus. I erase that report and the report of God is you are healed and that is your report in the name of Jesus thank you spirit of the living God thank you Lord Jesus light of the world you step down into darkness and open my eyes let me see beauty that makes this heart adore you and hope of a life spent with as the light of the world that
ze eskatalas kuria na mosha katabra ai na mana gozo kutusta pala mosha thank you for your power for your grace je ete prekete skalamala le embragada skalamosha katia ze eskatala bo suprede rakas katia mosha kata we give you the glory the awesome god we worship you we adore you this hour thank you for your presence for your power for your grace thank you for your faithfulness thank you for sending your song thank you thank you for the light of your word thank you ya namo shakata brana ze eskatia namo skapala le kada brakade skapala me katapale bra enda skapala je ete prekatia we give you the glory in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus Let's comfortably stretch our hands to our pastor this morning. Ask God to refill back whatever that have left him this morning. Somebody will pray, open your mouth and pray. He has become a channel for God to bless us this morning. Pray that God will refill back whatever that have gone out of him, whatever that has to do with him from the walk. Everything that God will refill in a full. Let the cup be full with the blessings, with the refreshment, with the open doors. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask that you make us the doer of the word and not the hearer only, and let your word manifest in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus. You can have your seat. Please let's uh, remember our Bible study on Tuesday by 8 p.m. So by 8 p.m. every Tuesday in the evening we gather here also. Please let's have it in mind. And let's remember today we have house fellowship in the evening. If you don't know where we are having our house fellowship, kindly reach out to me. I will uh, give you the proper address for it, please. And please, the people that are today is their first time of joining us, we will ask you to wait after the service. If we dismiss now, please kindly wait. Okay. And please, uh, the choir and the instrumentalists, you are asked kindly to wait behind, please, when the service has ended. The youth in, in the house shout hallelujah. If you are youth, shout hallelujah. On Thursday, uh, the youth will gather here in the on Thursday evening by 7:30 p.m. in the evening. So it will be the last meeting we're gonna have this year, 2022. Okay, 2022. Please, I will kindly urge you, don't miss that uh, gathering God is about to you know usher us into a new year so we need to see what God wants us to know as the youth and what we are taking in to 23 please it's very very important and please when the service ends we have uh, some drinks over there and the snacks so please uh, kindly have yourself been uh, refresh the that will be on our feet and uh, let's uh, remember on 25th <laughs> sorry today we have a provincial carol it will be in the evening by 6 p.m please uh, and uh, Okay, please, anyone that would like to go, it will uh, be held today by 6 p.m. in the evening. If you want to go, please kindly reach out to me when the service ends. Please. If you want to be a part of it this evening, 6 p.m., and we encourage everyone to be a part of it. It's for us, and it's for us. Let's be able to give God the glory this afternoon. Thank you for what you have done. Magnify his name. Thank you. Glory must be to the Lord for He is
grace. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship be with us now for everyone. Amen. Let's say surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Should we?